<laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome to this most recent episode of Maker Stories with me, Maria Marquis. So how this works is for Maker Stories, what we do is we sit down with a Coda maker and we just nerd out about Coda. Sometimes we take a look at a doc that they built. Sometimes we just talk about a topic. And I'm really excited to chat with Nina today for a couple reasons. Number one, Nina's great. And number two, <laughs> we're going to be talking about transitioning our thinking from spreadsheet world into database coda world. What that's like, how it feels, and how we can kind of get over that hump. I oftentimes talk about this as learning a new language, right? If I learn Spanish, then I have to learn Italian. There's some similarities, but there are some key differences. So this is all about moving through that transition, a transition that Nina herself has taken. Nina, would you like to introduce yourself to the group so they can know a little bit about you and why you're so cool? I would very much. Thank you for the kind words, Maria. My name is Nina. I am from Austria in Europe, and I have founded a company called Let It IO, which has at its core the focus to bring in one single interface to my clients. So instead of them having to switch between seven different tools, mm -hmm. they now have all the data in one tool. And I used to do that with, with whichever tool was the most convenient for the client. Uh -huh. But then I had the chance of doing the code doctorate last fall with Maria. To anyone listening, if you're wondering if you should do it, you should do it. Absolutely. <laughs> and ever since then, I don't build in any other tool anymore. I build in Coda because Coda is the perfect tool for one single interface, one source of truth. And um, in the beginning of the year, I had the wonderful opportunity to partner up with Supersynchronous, which is a network of amazingly talented Coda builders. Yes. And together we build customized solutions for corporations and what that means is we build out Coda docs for the team members, for the teams of a corporation. We empower those people to design the workflow they want to have it designed. And in doing so, the entire corporation gets its data onto Coda and gets insight into its data that it didn't have before. It's a new level of transparency. So I get to work in Coda all day, every day. <laughs> Couldn't be happier. It's amazing. Coda in the morning, Coda in the evening, Coda exactly. not at supper time because you're having nope. lunch. In exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. So folks, Nina has a beautiful presentation. She's going to walk us through this, this whole process of spreadsheet to database. But we want to invite all of you as we're going through today, if you have questions, comments, ideas, emotional outbursts, we want to know <laughs> about it. So go ahead and use that chat field. Part of my job today is to watch that very, very closely so that we can answer any questions you have. You don't need to wait for me and Nina to stop no. talking because we could talk for days. That might never happen. <laughs> I have no doubt. So please, at any point in time, let us know what's on your mind. We're here to support you. And without further ado, Nina, let's go. Absolutely. Thank you. So when Maria asked me if I would join her for Make a Story, I of course said yes. Maria said, would you? I said yes. No matter what Maria asks, the answer is yes. But then I had to stop and think, what is it that I would like to share? Would I like to share this really complex Coda doc I worked on, this hard formula I figured out? And while I want to share all of that, because it's amazing, um, I thought back what would have benefited me the most as I was starting out in Coda. And to me, that was what the topic of this webinar is. How do you make the move from a spreadsheet to a database? Or rather, should you make the move? Because if you're like me, you're familiar with your spreadsheet. You know it inside and out. You like it. So why should you move, right? And I'm not here to tell you you should move. That Only you can know that. But what I would like to do is I would like to explore with you what are the limitations of a spreadsheet? How can these limitations be resolved in a database? And how do you actually move your data from a spreadsheet format to a database format? That's what we're going to focus on. If you think about Coda's power as a magician's hat, which I think you should, and out of that hat, you're bringing automations, packs, native integrations, the code of formula language, buttons, all of the magic, you will still need to have that foundation in place to access all of that magic. And that foundation is the database design, is having your data in the database. So that's what we're going to focus on, this foundational step. 
I love it. I'm stealing this metaphor. Coda is the magician's <laughs> hat and we need the magician's hat in order to pull out the magic, <laughs> the, the database. That's so cool. All right, perfect. Let's get those rabbits. Excellent. Let's get those rabbits. So I'm going to share my screen perfect, and I will share a doc that I've prepared. You can see my spreadsheet data. And many of you might not know this actually, but Maria Marquis is um, moonlighting as a webinar example dummy data company owner. True story. So in this case, Maria Marquis has a small company. They are a total of four employees. She's the owner. And they're using a spreadsheet to track their projects. In this alternate universe, Maria has never been introduced to Coda, and she's super happy with this spreadsheet, right? They're a small company. They only have three projects to manage. So what they did is they set up a spreadsheet, one tap per project. One, two, three. At the, at the top of the page is the project's metadata, the project name, the client, the due date, the owner. And then underneath it are the tasks associated with that project. Let me just remove this. The tasks associated. She even did some um, conditional formatting to highlight the status of a task. And Maria is wonderfully happy with the setup. But as it turns out, her employees aren't. They actually say there are quite some limitations to the spreadsheet approach. So, oh, no. Maria, yeah, ma <laughs> but Maria, of course, is open to hear them. So, allow me to bring in to explore with you what her team members might not like about this spreadsheet approach. So, one of her employees, Bertha, says, I don't like the information display. And you know why? It has the same information for every viewer. So, whenever Bertha comes into this sheet, she has to see all of the tasks that Maria has to do. And she says, I don't care about the tasks Maria has to do. I've got enough on my plate focusing on my own. But whenever Bertha sets a filter here that only show Bertha's tasks, the next time Maria opens the doc, she removes the filter or sets it to herself. So it's a constant struggle. So that's not a great way to do it. Then also collaboration is really hard because the doc is tedious to share. I think all of us have had our shares of sending across emails back and forth. This is the current spreadsheet. No, this is the current, current spreadsheet and you get lost in the detail. Also, if it's not just the doc you have to share, you have to share the data that's in it, right? Imagine this has some sensitive data in it. Maria would probably take out this row, put it into a different file, send out this row so that it doesn't have the sensitive data in it. And, oh, where was the other data? How do I update it? It gets a mess really soon. Then the next step is data integrity, which is the user can enter whichever data they want to enter in a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet doesn't care. So let's say Bertha has to enter a new task, which is buy bananas. And this is Bertha. And then she's so excited about the bananas. She actually types in bananas right here. <laughs> Not the date. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and the spreadsheet doesn't care. The spreadsheet doesn't say alert, alert. You can't use bananas as a date. No, it's just in there. So that's actually kind of annoying because the same goes with the, with the status field. What if I say complete it? The conditional format it doesn't pick up because it didn't use the word done. So that makes it really hard. And for that same reason, it's really hard to take over somebody else's file or to pass over your work. Let's say Maria says, hey, I'm too busy. I'm the owner of this uh, hypothetical, hypothetical company. I don't have time to run this myself. I want Bertha to do this, to input all the data, to collect the data. And, she, and I think this has happened to all of you. You create a doc, it's super simple, super intuitive, right? And you say, hey, here's the sheet, please insert the data. And nobody ever does, or if they do, they do it incorrectly, or they throw up your formula, they mess up your formula because they enter the data in a wrong field. And you don't understand why, because it's so super easy, the sheet you prepared. But the truth is, the sheet is only ever easy to the person who designed it. Everybody thinks their sheet is easy. It's just so hard to understand because this information is the same to everyone. The user flow is the same for everyone. And 
What else um, is this, the, the formulas you write are not readable. Have you ever looked at these long Excel formulas equals index uh, parentheses match comma? You don't know what they do. There's no intuitive way for you to figure out what this does. So most probably you're just gonna close it out and go and have lunch. So it's really hard to take over somebody else's work or to pass on your work. So that's a downside as well. Another downside is the updating of the data. Neither of Maria's project members like this because let's say Charlie moves on. Charlie moves on to a different department. Now we have to uh, change Charlie's name here. We have to change it here. We have to change it here. We have to look if there's another tab where Charlie has been listed and change it there. And that's only within the same sheet. We're not even talking about different files. So updating data, data is a lot of manual work that often does not get completed fully. Some, some Charlie show references usually miss out. And the last thing that is a real limitation is that it's really hard to gain insights. Imagine if you wanna get a big picture view of the projects we're handling, which clients are the four, how do the due dates uh, fall on a scale? You would have to scroll through every sheet and then you would have to open up every file and do the same for every sheet within every file. It's really hard to derive data for your decision-making from this because your data is placed in a silo. So those are the rough overview of the limitations. And the team brings it to Maria. Maria is always open for trying something different. And one of the team members has heard of CODA. And Something that you um, as viewers might have been experiencing as well, as I know I have, is it seems like every day there's a new tool that pops up, right? It's Airtable, it's Coda, it's Notion, it's Trello, it's Monday.com. And at some point you just feel, hey, I've got a job to do. I can't go down a rabbit hole for each of the new tools. But once you understand that they actually all have one thing in common, you understand that they're not that different. And the thing they have in common is that they're all database centric, meaning they're not spreadsheet based, they're based on a database. So the thing we're doing now of transforming your data to prepare it for a database import is actually the same, whether you're moving your data to Coda or whether you're moving it to Airtable. I, for one, am a strong proponent for moving it to Coda. But that, of course, is up to you. What I'm going to show you is how you were to go about preparing your data to move it to a database. Because um, there's no law that says you can't just come here, copy this, and paste it into Coda. Well, let's just try this out right here. See, that works somehow. But I think it's magic. It's magic. <laughs> I think what helps the most is to think about what got you here won't get you there. If, if a database approach will offer you so many benefits, chances are you will have to do some adjustments, right? That's, I think that's intuitively understandable. And the changes you have to make, they're not that many. I listed them here. They're actually only four, which means um, in this spreadsheet, um, that Maria has used. We have the project made of metadata here on top. So when I look at the task and says, uh, obtain client sign off, then it's like, which project does this refer to? Oh, it's up here, it's this project name. That is a setup that won't do for a database. In a database, the row has to contain all of the information it refers to. So what this means is I would do the project name, I would enter that as a new column, and then I would copy this project name for all of the rows. Because now I can see for each task, I know which project it refers to. The second step is this one. Every cell needs to be the same data type. So that means remember our bananas example from before, that wouldn't fly here because it's not a date. And the next step might be a big surprise for people being familiar with a spreadsheet, every cell in a column can only be one specific, specific formula. 
Meaning, let's say you, you calculate um, the duration needed for a task, and you know this will take me two hours today and two hours tomorrow. And this is a harder task, it will take me two hours today and three hours tomorrow. Sorry. That is not something you could do in a database. Every, you would have to have one column saying dura estimated duration for easy tasks and one estimated duration for hard tasks, a workaround like that. If you have a formula, it will be the cell, the same for every cell of a column. And the last one is really easy. The first row always has to be the header. This is what it is. These are the row, this is, um, these are the rules how we need to prepare our data for transforming it. Boom, we're done. And you know what, well, Nina, I'm sorry to yes, interrupt, but something please. that this just pinged for me is that it, it, it reminds me of, this is a beautiful opportunity to look at your stuff mm -hmm. and go, okay, what's serving me? What, how did I get here? What is, do I want to bring all of this stuff with me into my new place? Or yes. kind of what can I leave behind? It almost seems like there's a really great opportunity to take a look at what's maybe accumulated over time and see where things have broken down and maybe clean it up a little bit. Like that seems like a really cool opportunity. Bring your Marie Kondo and let it loose on this spreadsheet. I couldn't yes. agree more. Yes, yes this absolutely. spreadsheet spark joy. No, <laughs> exactly. it just makes me stressed out because there's V lookup everywhere. <laughs> then it has to go. Then it has to go. I, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. And now that we've uh, transformed our data, let's actually bring it into Coda. And starting a new doc is as simple as can be. In our browser, we open a new window and we type Coda new. Ta da! That's my favorite Coda feature, honestly. Right? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Makes it so easy. We've got a blank Coda doc. So, the way I like to think about this is to not just copy and paste, like you just said, the entire stuff that's in my basement, but to go through it. And the way I like to go through it is I like to think of it on a spectrum to say which data changes the least to which data changes the most. And this might maybe sound a little bit out there, that. but what I mean by that is, for example, the status done in progress, not yet started, that will probably hardly ever change. That's not to say can never change. It's just to say in everyday life and everyday business life, we're not gonna change the status probably. So what we're doing is we're copying and pasting this and bring it in here. I'm gonna call this status and here we're gonna right click and say, use this column header. Okay, we've got our status. And maybe to make things a little bit prettier, we say if it's done, then it shall be this color. You will unfortunately have to watch me type quite a little bit, but I think the only way you can see how doable it is if you see me do it in front of you. Okay, I got it wrong one. So now we've got the coloring, that's nice. nice. And we're gonna take out this one. That's how easy it is to take one out. And let's say we have another one that says, uh, can't figure it out. Then boom, we just added a new status field. That's how easy it is. So the data that changes the least is the status. What else will change not that often? Because Maria is a fantastic boss, what's not going to change that often are the team members. For the most part, they're going to change, stay the same. I'm going to bring them here. Again, and when you're saying change, this is really like um, not ne necessarily changing in context of the database of like, oh, Maria has it now, Nina has it now, but rather the actual entity, right? I'm probably not going to change my name on a daily basis. Exactly. And our status, exactly. we're always going to use these four qualities and that's what we're getting at here. I just wanted to kind of- um, That is exactly what I meant. Indicator light there. It is exactly what I meant. And it's also not to say you're never allowed to change. If you bring in a new team member, let's say I get to work with you too, because I'm lucky that way. You're hired. Then, <laughs> yes. Then boom, there's a new team member. It's just to say during your daily work, you might change the task, right? You might add a task and check it off the next day. It's done, boom, it's gone. That's data that changes a lot. 
data that does that remains more static is going to be the status, your team member, and in our case, also our clients. Because we're saying we have pretty much, um, oops, there we go. Um, we have great relationships and they're not changing that much. So what I'm doing is copy and pasting them. And it will soon become clear why I take this brick by brick approach. So if you bear with me, because now we've got our more static data and what we're bringing in now, let me see. I'm sorry, I'm having the problem that my Zoom window is right there in the oh. middle. But <laughs> it's a I'll just, 21st century problem. It's okay. right. <laughs> it's doable. So what I did is I compiled all of the information from the three sheets into one sheet, and now I'm copying that one sheet. And I will just do that because then I will be able to access it again. And I just did the same for the tasks because it's not that much fun to look, to watch me uh, copy and paste information. Well, what I will do here, it looks, and I just want to make sure I'm fully understanding. Yes. All you did here was go, okay, I've got these three sheets. I'm just yep. going to put everything in, in one, one so that I've got one big table instead of these three disparate little locations. Absolutely. That's cool. exactly what Great. I did. And now we're actually done with our spreadsheets. So bye-bye spreadsheet. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna bring in this in the full size view. So, because now we're only focusing on our Coda doc. So I just brought in the projects. We're gonna name the table project. And I promise we will soon be done with our housekeeping projects and tasks. So you could say, yes, we're done, but we have one additional step to do, which is to establish relationships between these blocks because that's the power of a relational database. By connecting blocks with each other, we can bring in additional information and project that onto a new world. It will all become clear very soon. Um, for example, here are the clients. We already have a block here, clients. So we're saying, please take your possible... Whoa, okay, this is not working. That is, of course, uh, what's happening when you start to change something. So now it's working. We love a live demo. That's all good. <laughs> exactly. But I, I love how you just clicked in and were like, oh, hmm, what's happening there? All right. Oh, it's just, I just need to choose this table instead. Exactly. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. chose the wrong table. And what this does now is you can see what changed visually is it now has a an in boundary around it. And if I hover over it, I don't see anything. The reason I don't see anything is because this building block does not have any additional data attached to it. So let's say in here, we bring in recurring customer and we say, yes, yes, no. We could bring number of employees, budget, whatever it is, or a point of contact, for example. And now when I hover over this, it will tell me the additional information. So now I can build out all of my information of my client here and we'll be able to, in my projects table, access all of my client information that I have by sheer power of establishing this lookup, this relationship between the build, uh, two building blocks. Hey, Nina, and that is, yes. Could you do something for me? Let's say that Please. client company A changes its name to like Maria Co. Could you change mm -hmm. its name? Sure thing. And notice down below in Nina's projects table, that happens there too. Just a little thing I always love. Okay. Exactly. To, to, to show how this changes. No, please. That's exactly the power of it to see that these changes take hold immediately. Um, here with the project date, you can see this little sign, meaning that Coda immediately recognized this as a date. So that's good. We don't have to change anything. And remember how we said before that Debbie entered bananas because she was so excited instead of the date? This won't be possible now because if she wants to type, if she clicks here, she has to select a date. If she were to, I'm, I'm trying to type bananas, I can't. It has to be a date. That is the data integrity that is now enforced. 
And the project owner, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say, please take the values from our team members. It's even recommending it us, to us. Again, we see the outline. When we hover over it, we could see more information. So we could say job title, and then we would say boss. And then when we hover over Maria, we could see, oh, she's the boss. Okay, better take care of that task first. And now the last thing we have is our tasks table. Project tasks, task owner, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say, please take it from our team members. Task due date, already a date. Status, please take it from our status block. You can see the conditional formatting gets carried over. Task note, that's a text. And the project name is related to this project table. So we're now creating this relationship as well. And Nina, we have a question from yes. someone around like color and how do I get my colors yes. to look fine? So the first way that you can do it, Nina, could you just open up uh, the conditional formatting menu for some, ta some table? So you go yes. to options, you go to conditional format, and here's where you can change it around. So if we wanted status to be not yet started, instead of it being purple, we want it to be something else. Can you go ahead and just click on that for me? Of course. Click. Let's say we want it to be yellow. Notice it changes. So that's the first one. If, and if you also get like a template, right? Okay, here's a template. It's got colors. Mm -hmm. I don't like them. Just open up the options of your table and you can change it here. The other nice thing, and Nina has been walking us through, you know, how you then can connect that big task table to these smaller ones. Uh, Nina, could you just uh, mm -hmm. go to the team table and just highlight my name? Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Right. As a, a condition of formatting or just oh, within the as text just, just highlighting it like text. Mm -hmm. So just like click on that and format. Yeah. Text formatting. There we go. Okay, oh, no, I actually don't sorry, want to do that, that was Close no, that exactly. Yeah, just like select my name, like highlight it and then make it. Yeah. yeah. And then we're just changing the formatting and then scroll mm -hmm. down. Yeah, or do whatever else you want. That's fine. Yeah. And then we go. scroll on down and you can see that it comes through there. So mm -hmm. private chatter who asked this question, you can do it in those two ways. Mm -hmm. And what you can do now is if we're in the tasks table, you can see that it took over the conditional formatting. Yes. Even though yes. I didn't set any coloring for the tasks exactly. table. But if I look here at the conditional formatting, isn't that where it told me? <laughs> okay, that, that's apparently something that changed. Uh, previously, this was where it would tell me where it's drawing its. Oh, that what's happening here Nina, from. is um, it's actually pulling from your table. So if you scroll up to the status table where you mm -hmm. have it, it's green there. So it's just pulling it through since you formatted it there and it's a lookup column its color is associated with it. So I had kind of thought, I thought I remembered it that when you click on the destination table, if you click on conditional formatting, it would tell you inherits its conditional formatting from, mm -hmm. and then it would tell you which table it's inheriting the formatting yeah. from. It looks like they've changed the, the yeah. UI here. So yeah, who well, knows what'll happen? Who knows? Next? Well, <laughs> the color is here. That's the important part. <laughs> And um, just for now, let's say we don't like it that the rows are so wide. So all we're going to do is just say unwrap text. Okay, we like this a lot better. And now you can see that Maria is red everywhere. So what we've done is we have uh, gotten the housekeeping out of the way. And now we can play around with it. And there's one thing that if that's all you're going to take away from the webinar, I'll be so happy because this is the place where we have set up our buildings blocks and where we have set up our tables, projects, tasks. And what I want you to know is that this underlying base table will always stay the same. We will now create views of this table. And what that means is we will say slash, slash is the command, hey, Coda, wake up. And then we say tasks, which means give me a view of my tasks table. So now this is the exact same table we just had here, right? So you could say that's not very interesting. But remember how we said before that all of the information is presented to every viewer in the same way? Not anymore. And now, because Charlie was the one who shouted the loudest about not liking spreadsheets, he gets his Charlie, classic <laughs> Charlie. Classic. He gets, he gets his own sub page. And what we say is we're pulling the data from the space table, but we're not displaying it in the same way at all. 
we're displaying it in whichever way Charlie wants to see. And Charlie wants to see his tasks in a detail view. So on the left pane, he wants to see the tasks he has to accomplish. And on the right pane, he wants to see all of the details of the tasks. So we want to have a filter. We want to say, we only want to see the tasks where Charlie is the owner. Bam, done. As you can see, the view changed, the underlying base table didn't change. But now the magic word is writable view. So a view you can write on. See how we have create one doc per employee. And now we say, actually, that's wrong. It's create two docs per employee. Yeah. And now if we'll go back here, create two docs per employee, it changed. Can you assign that all of my tasks to Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling, I had a hunch you might say that, yeah. So that is the power of a writable view. So we have created one view for Charlie, but then let's say um, we don't only care about Charlie, we actually want to have a team dashboard. And for the team dashboard, we want to access the same base table, the same tasks base table. So again, we're going to say tasks. But then we're going to say, we want to display it as a card. You might know it under the name of Kanban board. And we might say, we don't care about any information other than the name and the due date. And then we want to group them by the status. So, because this is how we want to view our data. And we don't want done at the beginning. Done shall be at the very end. Actually, we don't even want to see it. We don't care about done and not yet started shall be at the beginning. And then we say, okay, wait a second. Onboard all users, I distinctly remember we already did this. It's currently in progress. So I'm gonna drag it over here. And if I go back to the base table and I search for onboard new users, I can have a search field here that makes it super easy. Oh yeah, I love that new feature. Oh, a little so search table. Oh, it's exactly. fantastic. <laughs> and now you can see in progress because we have just manually moved it. And then we can of course also say, actually, I want this sorted by the due date because otherwise I might miss something, bam. So if we bring in, in our side-by-side -side view, our limitations that we had before. Let's see how this changes now. What about information display? Is that still the same, same information for every viewer? No, in Coda, it's user-specific writable, writable views. What about collaboration? Is it hard? It's actually totally not hard because I can share this doc with either just my team members or I can publish it, in which case you will get a URL that you can just share with whomever. It's so much easier to get by. And if I say, hey, Maria, I'm out of town. Can you please take care of this? And then I know actually Maria needs detailed instructions. So I can say, hi, Maria Marquis. Oops, sorry. But I love that. That was a wonderful little happy accident. Notice you can at mention not yes. only people, but like also the team members table, the task, or any task yeah. or any team member, mm -hmm. and then you can hover over it just like we saw when Nina was showing us how she set up the lookup columns and get all of the detail, just like we saw when it was, you know, is this a recurring customer? Yes or no, which I let's think say we cool. want to know how many tasks does Maria have. So we I say, do. Hey, go to the tasks table, filter out where the task owner is Maria Marquis and then give me the count, please. Three, she has three tasks. So now I can say, hi, Maria, you have, and then this is hard coded three, and then open tasks. And then watch what happens when I say, actually, we're gonna give this task to Charlie. Hey, Maria, you have two open tasks. Yes. That is a fantastic way of, um, hard coding your surrounding information. And then what's ever highlighted in gray will automatically pull from the table you set up. So this is lovely. And now uh, remember our example was, I want to transfer my work over to Maria. Not only can I set up the data in a way that's intuitive for her, I can also have all my instructions in this place. Please remember to do the following. 
So everything will be in this one doc, all the steps that I'm guiding her through. I can share this doc with her and I can also set up notifications that in case um, the data hasn't been entered within the next two days, I will remind Maria again to please take care of the work finally. All of this can now be done that you did the tedious uh, household work of bringing your data into Coda. And um, let's go on to comparing whether our limitations have been resolved. Yes, it's so much easier to take over somebody else's file. Not one information has to be the information gatekeeper anymore. Everybody can do the work and look up the, the tasks in here. Ooh, Nina, we have, a, yes. we have a good question from Please. someone, which is, can a dashboard view fuse multiple tables? So I'm going to answer this question in two ways. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to, um, and Nina showed this so beautifully, is that when we switch over to a database model, we usually have fewer tables that we're working with, right? In the previous model with the spreadsheet, we saw we had three tables, one for each project. Nina combined all of that into one table that has the task, the project it's associated with, et cetera, et cetera. So now we can use that one table to power the views. But um, if we go to this team dashboard, maybe um, Tina, uh, Tina, I'm thinking about teams and then I'm like, team, Nina, <laughs> Tina. Um, Tina, Tina, yeah. Could you make another uh, chart here that shows us maybe, um, I don't know, like a, yeah, let's just do like a chart of tasks, maybe the things that are in progress are done. You can have as many different views of your information here as you like. And since it's on this page, you don't have to worry about, oh, this is the spreadsheet that's just for this table. You can pull in views of whatever data you want here to create like a custom dashboard uh, based on what you want to see. So each of these views is a, a transformation of one table. But notice we can do side by side of like, we have a chart here, we've got our Kanban view. Um, we can even put these side by side. Yeah, Nina's uh, way ahead of me. Like notice we've got all of this information set up. So you can do that in your way. And uh, Nina, I'm not sure if there's anything else around kind of how you think about dashboards and multiple tables that you wanna share too, but I just loved that question. It's a fantastic question. It's, it's one I think everybody comes across because it's just like, okay, but I have this in two different tables. And usually I say when my feeling is, okay, but how, because the answer is you can't, you cannot, because you can query a table. You cannot query two tables because that is incorrect database design. So you can, you can uh, find out a workaround that I'm going to share real soon, but Ideally, there's Exciting. a way you should think about why do I want to have my data in two tables? Why can I have the data in one table and then query that one master table? What I've used as a workaround in the past when um, for a specific reason, the client did not want to go a different route, then what you can do is you can say you have two tables, the projects table, the tasks table, and then you can set up an automation, which is a feature we're not going to get into because it's the magician's hat. But then you can say, whenever a row changes in the projects table, which means when a new row gets added, for example, to the projects table, then I want a copy of that row to be added in a table that we'll call merged table. So whenever a row gets added to the projects table, please also copy your row to the merge table. Whenever a row gets added to the tasks table, please copy that row to the merge table. What that will give you automatically is it will give you one merge table, projects and tasks. And then you can query that one merge table. So that would be the workaround. But ideally I would say go one step back and think about why is it that you think it has to live in two separate tables? Yeah, I love this following back to Nina's four things, right? That if we think about, you know, a row has all of the relevant information about that thing. And, that, uh, and that's why uh, setting up that database uh, from the beginning, you know, once you do it, like we've seen Nina do here, now she can transform it and play with it and get all kinds of calculations yeah. just because she took that little bit of time up front to convert it and, and think it through a bit. But exactly. I love the whole side-by-side -side dashboard because I can take that same view of tasks and I can be like, yeah. Show me all Maria's tasks. Show me all Charlie's tasks. Mm -hmm. Show me the number in progress. Show me the ones that are on hold. Now make a bulleted list, make a pie chart of how many tasks are associated with each client. And I can have that all on one page. So I love and the one, th the one thing I want to share is we used Charlie's view to get 
a feel for it, that we can have a dedicated place for different users. Actually, what we would do is we could um, also say, this is my tasks. And because Coda functions were much, very much like an app, it could then, and then we could say, set the filter to say, only show me the tasks where the task owner is the current user. So when I go to this page, I will see all of the tasks assigned to Nina. When Maria goes to the page, she will see all of the tasks assigned to Maria. So it's not necessary for us to have one page for Charlie, one page for Bertha, one page for, no. We have one page that's called my tasks. Whoever's locked in will see their tasks. Yeah, Nina, can you go to the filter? Let's just show it because it's super yes. fast to do. You don't even need to do a formula, right? Exactly. Uh, um, no, you do need to have. Oh, because uh, this is a lookup. Yeah. Um, yeah you do if need this to were a, a uh, let's just change the column type just to have some yep. fun. You got it. So we're going to change this data type. So let's go to the to core the, people area. Yes. Let's just go to the task owner, I guess. Yeah, we'll just change that to be people column. So we're just going to change the column type to be people. To people. And now, now it's you can see show, the, yeah, go ahead, Nina, the, you got it. I'm sorry. The, the only person that I'm, I'm going to bring this up here so that we can actually see it. The only person that is correctly displayed is myself. The reason for this being is that, A, these are fictitious people, but also <laughs> Maria, I haven't shared my doc with Maria. The moment I share my doc with Maria. Do it. Do that? Yeah, do it. Yes, it's me. The moment I share my doc with Maria, she will show up here with her avatar. Woohoo! And me now, and when we go to the, <laughs> and now when we go to Charlie's view, and then we say filter and we'll just get rid of that little guy. Just get rid of that little guy. You're right. And then we're saying if pass owner equals. Current user, no. Oh, uh, just user. User. Oh, user. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was in the there bubble world. Turns out Maria doesn't have any tasks. Is that right? No, that is. Oh, right. this is your tasks. You don't have anything. You're sleeping on oh, the job, Nina. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, why is Maria not assigned to this? Thank you. I'm sleeping on the job. But I see my two tasks, which again, yeah. uh, what I love is that it's the same. It's the same calculation that Nina did in her instructions, and now we're just seeing it in a different view so lots of ways to play around thank mm -hmm. you for for uh, uh not entertaining um being so kind to just demonstrate that for me <laughs> thank you for not firing me even though i'm slacking on the job apparently <laughs> well that just means i'm just going to go to my view i'm going to add all its tasks to be yours and then you'll see them in your view thank you of course <laughs> we have two more steps here for the limitations and one is updating data and um remember how we said that was a real drag in the spreadsheet and now we say uh, Bertha Beaver actually got married, got divorced, divorced, got whatever. Bertha, different name. And now, <laughs> oh, good thing that didn't change. Okay, uh, oh, let's go ahead and just reason. change it since we're doing the data type here. Uh, go yes, back and just have it be just text. Yep. Yeah, because right now it's saying like, oh, but where are the people you've shared this doc with? So we'll exactly. just change our mind. And notice we can change our mind. Yeah. There we go. Cool. And now birth a different name shows up here. Love it. And the other glory of this is, and this uh, goes back to collaboration. Let's say I'm adding a new task and I'm new to the company. Like what's Maria's last name? How do you spell it? I only have to click the right button. There's not, yeah. there's not going to be a Maria Marquis without an S and there's not going to be a Marie Marquis. It's, mm -hmm. it's one person and one person only. Yeah, and if I were to- yeah, and if I were to say, oh, there's um, John Doe now, it will tell me no match is found, but I can't add it. You see this sign? I say, nope, John Doe, he just started. Okay, and now we go back to our team members. There he is, there's John Doe. So it's not like in order to change it, you will have to go back and remember, where did I store the team members? Where was that? No, you can do it right from the view that you're accessing. And yeah, one last step I want to change, I want to share is gaining insights. We said that it was really hard because the data was siloed. And now the relationships we've established unearth hidden connections. And one way that's super visible is I'm gonna remove this and I'm in the team dashboard. If you looked at um, the charts, let's say I'm gonna remove this. And now we say 
for us, it's super important to know that our team won't burn out. Everybody carries the same workload. So what we're doing again, we're querying the tasks table. And then we say, but now we want to visualize it as a chart. And we want it to be a pie chart where we can see how many tasks does each owner carry. And now we can see John Doe has one. Maria has two out of 16, not a whole lot. Bertha has four out of 16. Charlie has five out of 16. Okay, it's not that bad. But we can have this, for example, at the top of the page. So what we do is drag and drop it up here. And we can say, we always want to have this as the main view because we want to be able to counteract if the workload gets too unbalanced. That is an insight we would not have had in our spreadsheet data unless we specifically told someone, please go through each of the sheets individually, note down how many tasks does each person carry and then uh, compare the data. Let this Coda allows be your intern. <laughs> exactly. This allows you to unearth insights you didn't know you were asking for. And that's a key difference. You can, um, you can run any analysis on any spreadsheet. Of course you can, but you will know, need to know exactly what you're searching for. You won't need to know that in so much detail because you can just query the table and kind of play with it and see what comes up. And what this does, hopefully, the point of this webinar for me was to show you what are the core differences between a spreadsheet and a database. It's not to say one's right, one's wrong. It's to say they are both to be used for different use cases. Um, spreadsheet have some limitations that can be overcome by using going the dashboard route. It's not hard to transform your data to prepare it for an import, but it's a step you have to take. And then once you've done it, once you have the foundation in place, now you can dig into the power of Coda. You can get started with the automations, with the buttons, with the integration, with the packs. Truly, the world is your oyster, the sky's the limit. But for that, it's important to pay some attention to your foundations. And I hope I was able to give you an overview of that in this I webinar. I love it. Nina, could you open up the, uh, the thing that you were using to show the problems and solutions? Yes, of course. Now, uh, folks who might be new to Coda may not have noticed this, but this is also a Coda doc yes. that Nina has created. So notice Nina went into the little magic hat she has mm -hmm. her, her database magic hat that she's built. And can we actually see this as a- Of course, a let me show you what it is. I started out with having the criteria in the table. And then I, um, I'm, I have two columns hidden. And then what I, I, I wrote down the names for this. So I said, just the text. And then I didn't like the fact that it would just all be there at the same time. So instead, what I did is I inserted a new column. I set it to column type button. And then I set up the button and I said, when this button gets clicked, then I want you to modify this column called sheets. And I want, what I want you to do is I want you to take this icon and the text that I've written for sheets. So let me concatenate for folks who might be new concatenate is just a fancy way of saying make a sandwich combine the things yeah. together it's a great scrabble word <laughs> so what i do is when i push this button all it does is it says okay combines this icon plus this information bam 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 that's just a very basic setup for using buttons and then because i was able to change the display of the view and I used it to be a cart. And then I set the columns to say, I don't want this to be seen. And then when you click it, oh, I, uh, I do have to set it, I'm sorry. And then when you click it, then I have to um, set it up like this. So you're just putting it in the right order of where those I'm things I'm just will putting occur. it in the right order, mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. Exactly. Beautiful. Awesome. So again, like notice how um, you can start with a, something that feels very familiar for those of us who started with spreadsheets, mm -hmm. right? Nina made that task table. 
-hmm. And then you can create like little interactions to this point as well. So you can really expand, but notice how Nina showed us everything starts with that core table. And once you have your stuff organized, then you can do whatever you want and you can get super creative. Um, and you've got that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my brain is like, we've got about, and also like Nina, woohoo. Um, <laughs> so we've got about nine minutes, everybody. We would love to know what questions do you have? Um, it can be anything Coda related. It can be about Nina. It can be about databases, but let us know, go ahead, post to chat. What is on your mind? We want to be able to support you. Oh, and in case any of you are planning on do not asking a question so you can go home, home early, that's not happening. I've got like a, <laughs> a full bag of tricks I'm going to bring out if you're not asking questions. Nobody's okay. going home early. No. <laughs> Teacher Nina is in. Oh, yeah. We are using the time. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, we've got a question. What's in your bag of tricks? People want well, to ask. <laughs> you know it. Um, there's one thing um, that's actually still a simple trick, but I think it's super powerful. And that is when you're coming from a spreadsheet view. And where is my data I just had? And um, remember how here in the spreadsheet we're using all of well, this. Nina, text. we actually don't see your spreadsheet. I think you have to. Maybe oh, share the okay. window. I think we're just on a different desktop, but we're getting your cool logo, which is awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that the point of it all? It's true. Um, Plug yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, what we can do now is awesome. that we have we have our tasks, and remember, there's just so much text. And I'm going to unwrap the wrap the text again, and then we can see that there are some references here. For example, this is a reference to a URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this reference and put it in here. And there is a link to a slideshow. I'm going to take that and put that in here. And what I will do now is when I, I'm going to set this to be Charlie's task. And here on Charlie's view, we're going to say, What that allows us to do is now we can access the link. So directly from the sheet, we can access the link, but we can even do more. We can say, uh, what did we call it? There we go. Column seven, the importance of naming. Exactly. <laughs> oh my, the importance of naming. Isn't that true? So what I'm going to do in here is going to say, so and what, all, when Nina I'm added that, that formula, she didn't have to do it on every area. She yep. didn't have to do the dragging thing because that's the identity of that column. This column will always show an embedded view of whatever that link is in column seven. And even, and this is what I meant with readable formula, even if you have no clue what I just did, you will be able to read. It says embed. Now you might need to look up what embed means, but you can read it, embed whatever is in column seven and contrast that if I were to type out this long index match formula in Excel, which would not give you this intuitive understanding of what I just did. And what I want to show you now is that, boom, I just brought in that Google slide sheet into Charlie's Love view. It. I can expand it so that it's visible, uh, visible in a larger area. But this is just one tiny example of how much more interesting I have made this information now because I, I'm not, a spreadsheet allows you to enter text or numbers. The database knows no such limitation. Give me a URL, give me a video, give me a GIF, give me a PDF, whatever it is, give it to me. I can display it, I can handle it. And that's the, that's the real glory of where it's starting to come through the power of it. Yeah. And Nina, um, could you do something for me? Of course. Um, can we go to the full task view again? Yep. Um, let's say that our task notes are getting really, really long. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we're like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? 
Um, one of my favorites, and Nina knows where I'm going, <laughs> is this canvas column format. This is a pretty new feature, but notice it made it into like a little button looking thing. Mm -hmm. And now if Nina clicks on any of those, here we have a, a handy little Coda doc inside of our Coda doc. So now Nina, could you add a table there for me? Of course. So she can do the slash just like we saw before. And we've got a template. So now we're able to vote here right on this task itself. So once you have that database, you can then um, even have more of that same rich connectivity inside of your tables as well. And uh, Nina, let's just rename this Dory topics for discussion. Let's call it sure. like Maria's questions. And then let's just go to another page entirely. And we'll just create a new one, oh, like a new page on your whole Coda doc, sorry. Also, my Midwest accent came out when I said Coda there, Coda. <laughs> <laughs> do a slash and we'll do Maria's tasks. Let's just add a little view of that here or Maria's questions, yeah. So notice it's that same table that we had inside of the row. And now Nina could filter here. We could do all kinds of things. So that's another fun thing. If you've got a lot of textual information or contextual information for your table data, just plop a little canvas column in there and you'll be ready to go. Absolutely. Great example. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Nina, I'm just curious, what is your favorite Coda feature? Obviously, it's hard to choose, just like choosing our favorite children. But what's your favorite Coda feature or the one you find yourself using all the time? Uh, my ah, I'm gonna um, circumvent that question. Mm. My favorite Coda feature is the fact that you can access the Coda formula language at any place in any doc, which means you get to learn so much. So for example, this means filter, and then you can say if status is in progress. So you just click mm -hmm. it and it's super intuitive. But in any, in any, um, in any spot, you can also always say show formula and you will see the formula that Coda automatically input in the background. And from that formula, you can learn so much so that next time you don't have to click filter if task is that you can just type in the formula. Yes. And that right. gives you superpowers. It's true. And, and the fact that you can do it absolutely anywhere. Oh, we got a good yes. question from Carlina. Is there an applause button? Let me show you <laughs> a fun thing. So I mean, Thank we need you. to do an applause for Nina for sure. But if you want to, <laughs> I'm here in a brand new Coda doc, love that new doc smell. One of the things that you can do is you can add uh, a reaction. So mm -hmm. I'm going to type slash reaction so right here. And now I have a little button. I can name it. You know, this is like super claps. And then I can choose an icon. So maybe I want this to be clap. Or maybe I want it to be, um, let's see, Nina, to say the first word that comes into your head. Apple. Apple. Maybe I want it to be an apple, right? Or like no apple. Ooh, I like this one because it's kind of eaten. And now people can click it and it gives me a little count. Now, if I the write- The way I- I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. The way I love to use that is to use it as a book and to ask, have you read this? Yes. And then I count the reactions. How many people have actually read this? Or I can reach out and mm -hmm. say, hey, Stephen, I saw you haven't read this progress report yet. Please do so before our meeting tomorrow. Yes. And so it gives you that feedback. You can even change it. So here we have a number, right? But we could say, oh, I want it to be people instead, or I don't want to show anything, right? If I want to not have that bias there. So that's something that you can do. And um, like Nina said, um, the I've read this, I actually think we even have this as a- Yeah, yeah. I think so too, yeah. I can do reading. slash and notice it's pulling up all my templates. These are available to everybody. Done reading button, there it is, I'm done. So that would be a way to think about that, Carolina. Great question. And yes, big applause for Nina. <laughs> Thank you so yes. much. Thank you um, so much. We have a question um, for you from Martine, which yes. is, I'm curious about your business model using Coda as you're building a tool for your customers. Two questions. What type of docs do you normally do for them? And do you use a subscription-based or project-based pricing? So how do you, how do you think about this for question. your uh, livelihood? Primarily uh, at Supersynchronous, we think about this subscription-based. We say we're embedded builders. We embed ourselves deeply within your company. We'll learn about what your teams do. We build out docs for whatever it is. So it might be a social media content planner. It might be a project tracker. It might be whatever. 
And then usually once the easy projects get out of the way, that's when the good, when the juicy part is starting to happen. And then because we've already gained those insights from the team, we can know, hey, actually, we know that HR has the data you need. So now we can connect the data from HR with the data from finance and boom, new insights arise. Phenomenal. Very cool. Yeah. I love, oh gosh, Nina, you have the coolest job. Like I do. You just get to, I do. <laughs> you I just do. Get to build docs that yep. help people solve yes. real problems yes. in their it's business. It's amazing. Which it's amazing. I just love that. I'm a huge, big old fan. Yes. Ooh, we have another question around, um, is there a, like, I want people to like vote uh, for people who've already um, added something. Let me just show, this is probably one of the most oh, yeah. frequently mm -hmm. used code mm -hmm. templates. Yeah. So uh, if I do slash voting table, this is a little template I can use. And now I can just clear this sample data, get rid of this flavor text. And now I can adjust this. So I could say, uh, vote for your favorite pizza. And I can right click on this button and I can uh, name, I can change the label to be nominate pizza type. I'm going to change the icon to, we're going to make it red because that feels I'm sure like you've pizza. noticed <laughs> sooner or later, Maria will divert back to food. It's like, I will. Yes. So now this pizza type, I can just be like, well, obviously pineapple because I'm a monster. I understand that people don't like pineapple pizza, but I love it. I'm also going to just open this row for editing, which means that now when I click here, it opens it up so I can be like, great. Nina, do you have a favorite pizza? Salami. Ooh. Is, that, is that an English word? Yeah. Salami. It is. Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so now we've got that. We can see the authors. Um, this is automatically being populated mm -hmm. by whoever pushes the button. So if Nina pushes this, it will show Nina's name. Mm -hmm. And now this is that little reaction button. Notice the same kind of thing we have up here, but we've just got that little vote. So that would be a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, again, that's just a, a slash command away, voting table, there it is. Awesome. Nina, folks are just so appreciative, loving everything. Um, so I am much. too. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time to share your own thought process and kind of how you went through this process yourself. Uh, it was so actionable. Um, everybody, I posted over there in chat a link to the doc that Nina created mm -hmm. that outlines this whole process. Great for some further reading, further marinating. Uh, and please do not hesitate to get in touch with us if you ever have questions. Oh, yeah. We are here to support you and we are here to celebrate you. Nina, before we sign off, anything that you would like to plug today? Yes, uh, please connect. Connect with me on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. Nina underscore let it L-E-D-I-D. I love to talk to you. I talk Coda all day, every day. Any questions you have, bring them my way. Super happy to answer all of them. And thank you so much for watching. Thank yes, you. of course. All right, y'all. You heard it here first. I'm so excited. I can't speak, Nina. <laughs> you heard it here first. Follow Nina on Twitter. Start building, start tinkering, and then start to dream about what you might want to do with your data once you have it all nice and organized. All right, Nina. You have a great night. Perfect. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. I will. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care. Thanks.